Namaste. Hello and welcome to yoga number 64. As always, we'll start with the opening quote. The fact that you aren't where you want to be should be enough motivation. The fact that you aren't where you want to be should be enough motivation. But if you want to try and motivate yourself, you start with concentration. You focus entirely on one thing, which leads to tranquility. And with tranquility, you might get some spaces between the thoughts, which leads to insight. So purely concentrating on something, it'll focus your eyes, calm you down, calm you down mentally, slow the thoughts down, the 40,000 thoughts supposedly we have each day, and get some spaces between them, and then it may lead to insight. So we'll start with concentration. If you lie down on your back, place the soles of your feet together with the knees flopping out. And then we're gonna inhale with the palms together, twisting at the wrists and stretching up through the middle of the torso, over the face, over the back of the head. Inhaling as we stretch right up, stretching the intercostals, sweep out, 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 and down. Thumbs up the center of the body. So get comfortable. Get the legs in a comfortable position. Fingers pointing down in the groin. And as we start to inhale, we turn the fingers around to bend upwards, to face upwards. And we're, not bent, we're trying not to bend at the elbows at this stage. And as we continue the inhalation, we trace the thumbs up over the center of the body, over the face, if you can, over the top of the scalp, as close as you can to the head onto the ground. And then you're getting a lovely stretch. As you're stretching, lifting up the shoulders, straightening the arms, and that's a stretch. You take out, stretch your fingers right out and sweep down. Back to the beginning. At any time you feel you need to adjust the feet, you can take them a bit closer or edge them away. Look at the stretch in the groin. So back to the beginning, you can take as many breaths as you need to do this. You take your fingers from pointing down in the groin to pointing up to the face. Turn at the wrists. Then you bend at the elbows as you inhale. Gently lift the thumbs up. And you're getting a slow, smooth, full yogic breath. And then sweep out as you relax and allow the surf, as much of the surface area of the body to relax and release onto the ground. So this is a wonderful posture to do anytime you're tired or out of sorts or at the end of the day, because it's not load bearing. They're getting a wonderful deep breath into the lower lobes of the lungs. The heart is at the same level as the rest of the body. And of course, your medicine bowl that carries your 40,000 thoughts is resting on the ground, your heavy head. Of course, we're cleansing the lungs, oxygenating the blood and calming the nervous system. And if you're fully concentrated, tranquility will come. And perhaps with a little bit of tranquility, you may get an aha moment, a bit of insight for the way ahead. Slow, smooth, and deep. Mm. 
And of course, you can pause the video and do as many rounds of this as you wish. You could do this for 15, 20 minutes. And then with full awareness, and you'll be able to assess if this is beneficial for you. If you'd just like to take three more, you can feel that lovely stretch through the rib cage, through the shoulders, through the arms. cleansing the body from a cellular level upwards. Believe and receive. Really stretch out as you release the arms down. The last one. and take the knees together. If you need to um, use your hands to help to push the legs in, please do. And then adjust yourself on your mat, straighten your legs. Put your hands behind your head. And we're going to do simple leg circles. So we're going to take the right leg first, Clockwise, as we inhale and try to keep the leg straight, it doesn't matter the size of the circle, but it does matter that you keep the leg straight. You'll feel a gentle pull on the hamstring if you're keeping it straight. And a nice squeeze and pressure and then guinal nodes, which are the ones in your groin. Your hands are behind your head, so you're trying to keep your elbows as close as you can to the ground. As you inhale on the upward movement. Exhale on the downward. So it's up to you how many circles you do with the right leg. Again, you can build up your own practice. We'll do a couple more clockwise with the right leg. Slow, smooth, deep breaths. And remember to allow the body to stretch naturally. You're not forcing, you're allowing the breath to dictate the speed of the movement. When you're ready, you switch to the left leg and of course, one side will always be different. So be careful not to force it. Inhale as you raise the left leg up, keeping it straight. Keeping your awareness and relaxing those shoulders as well, trying to get the elbows as close to the ground as possible. A couple more clockwise with the left leg. If you wish to do the exact count on either side, please do but I generally just keep going until I feel a little bit of fatigue and then I stop. Once you start to feel the buildup of lactic acid, then you stop and change leg anti-clockwise on the right.
Inhale in the upward movement. Exhale in the downward. Try to keep your awareness in the full yogic breath. You're allowing the abdomen to inflate, the rib cage to expand, and a final puff of air up at the clavicle area. A couple more with the right leg. So you can feel what's happening. You're probably getting a slight ache in the thigh muscles. You can feel what's happening to the abdominals. The shoulders are getting stretched. You're compressing your lower back onto the ground as you lift the leg. And lastly, anti-clockwise with the left. And you can totally immerse yourself in the movement. Concentration leads to tranquility, which may lead to insight. Two more on the left, if you haven't already stopped. And you can keep your hands at the back of your head or you can place them down the side. We're just going to do leg lifts, but a third at the time. So we'll raise the right leg up and stop a third of the distance. Inhale, raise another third. Inhale up to the final third. As you come down, the same process. Be careful not to strain the groin with this one. And just alternate legs for as many as you wish. Inhale, you raise a left, a third, exhale. Again, you keep the legs straight. It's not so important how high you get. You're trying to relax the rest of the body. Focus on the breath. In line with the movement. If you need to stop and take a few comfort breaths to get rid of any lactic acid, please do. And get a lovely compression of the lower back onto the ground. Finish the round that you're on. And then release your arms. Arms facing upwards down the side of the body. Floppy feet. And just take a few comfort breaths. Breathe, believe and receive. So inflate that stomach, expand the rib cage, final puff of air in on the top. Wait for your natural pause. And release. And of course, smile. Two more breaths. And 
then we'll go to an old favourite, Supta Pada Muktasana, which is squeezing the right leg, both legs and left leg. So we slide the right heel along as we inhale and as we exhale, we gently clasp the knee as we come up and ex exhale, as I said, and squeeze, pull the knee towards you, tuck the chin in. It doesn't matter how far the knee gets towards your chin. It does matter that you tuck the chin in. I'm not tucking it in so much because of the microphone. And then inhale as you release, slide the right heel along. As you exhale, inhale as you take, slide both heels along, exhale as you squeeze. Always focus on your natural pause. You can take a comfort breath in between each movement. You try to shape your own practice and then squeeze the left. This is a wonderful exercise, massages the stomach, squeezes the nodes in the groin under the armpit, stretches the back, the neck, contracts the arm muscles, squeezes the thyroid, Again, this is a, another one you can do at the end of a day just to ease away any baggage that you've picked up. Finish the round that you're on. So it's right leg, both legs, left leg. We take our feet to our seat. We're going to do the bridge. Make sure you're comfortable. Feet are parallel. We're going to inhale as we stretch the arms up. And then relax as you stretch the arms behind your head. Flatten the floor. And just inhale as you stretch, elongate the torso. You can feel the stretch through the intercostals. You can feel the shoulders, the arms. Stretch up and relax without, ra without raising the seat. Holding for your natural pause. So after a few stretches, then you can raise the seat, only if you wish. If you don't feel like doing it, you don't do it. So we'll raise the seat up. Again, readjust the feet, try and feel that they're parallel. And if you feel you're not getting any strong contraction through your thighs or your gluteals, then take the feet a bit closer to your bottom. So we're not going for an aggressive lift up, we're more looking for taking the feet closer to the bottom. So when you raise the seat, that will increase the contraction of the gluteals and they get a nice contraction and stretch of the thigh muscles. So there's two ways of doing this. You can keep the feet far away and go for the stronger lift, or you can take the feet in a bit closer. And as you inhale, you're stretching through your hands, gently raising your seat. And you can feel, so you're not raising so strongly and you're not dropping it so far. As you inhale, you're getting a lovely stretch and contraction through the thighs, contraction of the gluteals, and a stretch through the shoulders and arms. So it's almost a subtle movement, but it's very good.
And again, only if you wish, if you feel energized enough or you're in the mood, you can take the awareness to the left foot, take the balance on the left foot and raise the right. And at the same time, you're trying to keep a little bit of a lift. Try to keep the legs straight. My hamstrings are a little tight with cycling. So you just don't raise the legs so high. So you raise the right leg up and you can feel what's happening to your left leg and your gluteals. Couple breaths. It doesn't have to be much. Lower. Inhale, lift up and relax. And take the awareness to the right foot. Feel that you're comfortable holding the weight on the right foot and you raise the left. And you'll stretch through and you'll feel, you can feel what's happening. So when you're doing your personal practice, it's up to you to decide how many rounds work for you in any particular day. You don't have to force yourself through something that's not for you. And as you lower down, you try to get the hands to reach the mat at the same time as your seat. Now the seat may not go onto the ground because you may have taken your heels so close to your bottom. We still have our feet next to our seat on the ground. I'm going to take the right foot and place it on the left knee. So when we do this next two movements, try to, try to become aware of which side is tighter. So I know from experience, when I put my right foot on my left knee, this is the tighter side for me. So we're gonna take our um, right hand and place it through. We're gonna clasp our knee. We're gonna clasp under the knee or over the knee. So you decide what works for you. The right hand goes through the triangle, either under the knee or over the knee, and you just start to breathe. So we'll get the right foot, top of the left knee. If there's any problems, you just stop your practice, have a look, pause the video, and then get in position. You just start to breathe slowly and deeply and let the breath do the work. Now, some people say they can get a sore neck in this position. So you can lower your back down and rest your head on the ground if that's the case. You may not have the flexibility if you're holding above the knee, but you can release the clasp, put it under the knee, and lie back. So it's a different stretch. Which continues to stretch in the hip area without straining the neck. When you feel you've had enough of this, you release the right knee. And we'll put the left foot on top of the right knee. And we repeat the process. Clasp under the right knee or over the right knee, depending on how flexible you are. Again, if you're getting a little bit of ache on the neck, you can lean back. But try to relax into the process. And remember, it takes six seconds for the muscles, tendons, ligaments to start to release.
And then when you're ready, you can release. Place the feet on the ground next to the feet. Take a few slow, deep breaths. And as you inhale, try and compress your lower back onto the ground, which are flattening that natural lordosis that most of us have. And then we're just going to lift our seat up once more. There's no need to put the hands behind the head. Just lift the seat up and just allow the spine to go in the reverse position that it was in. You can take your feet closer again if you wish, if you want the stronger contraction. Play about with it. Figure out what works for you. And gently lower down. Now we're going to put our foot on top of our knee again, but it's going to be the side that, that, that was the tightest. So whichever side was the tightest, we're going to repeat that one side. So for me, I'm putting the right foot on top of the left knee because I know from experience, this is my tighter side. So I always finish and do one extra movement on the tighter side to try and balance up the body. And then clasp above or below the knee as we squeeze again. If you have any problems with this, you stop your practice, have a look at the video, get a proper understanding, and then go back and Right, right. And in your own time, release, stretch out the legs. Allow the body to relax in Shavasana, palms facing upwards, floppy feet. Allow the body to breathe naturally. When you're ready, roll onto your front and we're going to do the Sphinx. It's a preparation for the Cobra. So with this one, it's important that you have the elbows as close to the torso as possible and you have the fingers in line with the brow of the head, the forehead. And what we do is as we inhale, we lift up the chin and we're not putting pressure on our arms. You're using the, the back muscles as you lift up, lift up, lift up until you're resting on your elbows. Now the elbows have to be close to the torso because if you put them wider, you won't be able to come up. You can go back down and try this if you wish. It's not possible to come up. So the elbows have to be as close as you can to the torso. Now to practice this when you can come up and down repetitively, inhale and as you come up, a few breaths, exhale as you go down. But I prefer to stay in this position. And you're just going to inhale as you're trying to lift up through the chest, which stretches the abdominals and contracts the lower back and then soften and relax as you exhale. So you're trying to get soft through the neck and the shoulders. Inhale, come up through the chest. You're lifting up through the, the, the chest, the chin, holding for your natural pause. And as you exhale, 
You relax through the back and you can feel the compression in the lower back. This is a preparation for cobra. So in the cobra position, your hands are usually under the shoulders, but it's a very strong contraction of the lower back. Compression. Slow, smooth and deep. So this obviously strengthen, strengthens the arms, stretches abdominals, and you can feel what it's doing to the lower back. So you decide how many is, is, is correct for you, how many uh, breaths. And when you've had enough, you exhale as you lower down, forehead on the ground, take a few comfort breaths and you continue either up and down or up in breaths in a stationary position. So now we're going to take our arms and we clasp our hands behind our back, keeping the arms straight. I'll have to stay up in this position for the microphone, but you're resting your chin on the ground. And as you inhale, you're not lifting your arms, but you're pushing your arms, you try to lengthen your arms and your clasp over your buttocks, which opens up the shoulders and lifts you up a little. Again, there's a lot of um, instructions today, so if any problem, you just stop the video and have a wee look. So we're inhaling, so lengthening the arms. It has the effect of taking the shoulders, squeezing them back, and you come up and look forward. It's quite a strenuous one. If you get any aches in the any ache in the lower back, you can separate the feet a little bit more, see if that helps. If that doesn't help, then you don't do this one, it's not for you. And only if you feel comfortable with this movement and it's and it's okay for the lower back, you can come up, inhale, stretch away with the arms, and you can raise the arms from the torso. But this is very strong, so be careful. The snake. But you have to have the confidence that the lower back is okay. Of course, it's very strong in abdominals. And then once you've done as many as you're comfortable with, stretch your arms up, out, rest your forehead in the ground. And again, a bit of movement about today. I'm going to roll back onto, onto our back. Do a posture which preparation for the plow. So you can keep your hands down the side of your body. You can create fists and place them just under the edge of your buttocks, which I prefer. We're going to take our feet to the seat and we're just going to raise our legs, legs straight, but you're trying to keep as much of the lower back on the ground as possible. We've done this many times. I prefer the support of the buttocks, the fists under the buttocks. We raise both legs as far as you can, you're not going to get them so far. And this is all we're looking for. Trying to keep as much of the lower back on the ground as possible. 
but you're trying to get a little stretch through the lower back. If you wish, you can inhale, separate the legs. Exhale, take the legs back together. You can play about with this. If you wish to take the fists away and then feel what happens to the lower back, it's a lot more strenuous. So be, care be careful. I prefer the support of the fists. Inhale, feet away. Exhale, take them together again. Again, this is reasonably strenuous. Once more, if you wish. Then from this position, you bend at the knees. You place the palms down at the side of the body. You push through the arms and we're going to raise the seat up into an inverted position, inverted posture. We've done this many times as well. So we push through, we lift up, and then we place our hands under our hips. And then just rest into the position. So we're not crushing our chin into our torso. We're not taking our feet way beyond our head onto the ground. We're about 90 degrees, I believe. Relax into the position. Bringing some oxygenated blood to the brain, relieving the pressure on the heart. Again, you build up how long you stay in this position. If you've high blood pressure or any problems with your eyes, you shouldn't stay in it too long. But to come out of it, you bend at the knees, place your hands back on the ground, and then you slowly, vertebra by vertebra, roll the spine back down. So you're supporting it. Nice and slow. Place the feet on the ground next to the seat. Allow the body to recalibrate. Allow the body to breathe naturally. The palms are down the side of the body. Feet are next to the seat. Again, a reasonably, another reasonably strenuous one coming up. We're going to do sit-ups, but you're protecting the lower back because the feet is at the seat. So we're just going to place our hands on our thighs. We inhale, and as we exhale, we tuck the chin in, and we just raise the torso up. It doesn't matter how far you get with your hands. They might come up halfway up your thighs or up to your knees. It doesn't matter. You can hold for a couple breaths and lower down, or you can inhale and raise up, exhale, lower down. You can have a comfort breath in between. Nothing is written in stone. You have to find the way that works for you best. Inhale, fill up the lungs. Exhale as you slide the hands up the legs and look towards the knees. So again, you just continue as many rounds as you wish.
couple more in your own time. If you wish. But you never continue when to build up of lactic acid. Because it just means the next day you'll be aching and bruised. So now a lot, a lot of flipping over today, but we'll roll back onto our stomach. I'm just trying to flex the, the spine in different directions. Roll into our stomach. And we're going to do a simple bow. So we bend at the knees and we clasp our ankles, but we keep the knees on the ground. If you can't reach the ankles, you still bend at the knees and just have your arms stretching towards the ankles. So we're not taking the knees off the ground. We're resting our forehead on the ground. And as we inhale, we push away with the feet and pull with the hands. Inhale, hold the breath, push away with the feet, pull with the hands. Again, you're opening the shoulders, squeezing the shoulder blades, strengthen the arms, strengthen the legs, flexing the spine. A very good posture, but it's strenuous. Looking forward, pushing and pulling. And if you're comfortable with this and you feel you want to try, then only now after stretching and feeling comfortable do you try to lift the knees off the ground because it's very strong posture. So we inhale, we look forward, pull with the hands, push with the feet, and you can lift the knees off the ground. They don't have to come off very far. It's a very strong posture. And we're down, rest. Take a few deep breaths to get rid of the lactic acid. You will have lactic acid with this posture. Try once more, only if you wish. Lower down, release, come up, sit back on the heels, stretch out with the fingers. So you're going to elongate the back after squeezing it. We've done this many times as well. We're just going to walk away with the fingers. Inhale as you walk away with the fingers. Exhale as you sit back on your heels. If you want to change the position, you can place the palms together, which gives you a different stretch on the upper torso. Get those deep breaths in. And then when you're ready, you come up and sit in Vajrasana. Settle down. It's quite strong stretches today. Remember, you can place a cushion under your ankles. You can place a cushion between your ankles and your seat. 
You can actually buy a fancy little wooden stool that you can sit on, or you pick another comfortable sitting position. We're just going to do a basic alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shadana. Nadis are the energy path pathways, Shadana is a cleansing, cleansing of the Nadis. So we're breathing through the left nostril, out through the right, in through the right, out through the left. As you build up your practice, you can add longer holds, you can um, exhale greater than the inhalation. There's many, many books on Nadi Shadana. But at the basic level, we take our hand, we, we have the two fingers, two fingers and thumb. So we bend down the middle two fingers and then we have the ring finger and thumb, which we use to press the cartilage at the side of the nose. So we start by exhaling through both nostrils. And we close the right nostril, inhale through the left. Just slow, smooth, deep inhalation, no need to count. When you feel you filled your lungs, you close the left, wait for your natural pause. You don't hold, you just allow, and then open the right and exhale. Again, you wait for your natural pause after the exhalation. When you're ready to inhale, inhale through the right. Close the right. When you're ready to exhale, exhale through the left. So it's in left, wait for your pause, out right, wait for your pause, in right, out left. seed of meditation, that natural pause. So if you think back to the concentration leads to, to tranquility, which leads to insight. Again, as you get more confident with the practice, you can hold for a number of inhalations, count as you inhale, count as you exhale, build up the practice. You have to be very careful because the lungs are very thin. You don't want to damage them. But in the first instance, this has an effect of just the homeostatic balance within the body. It balances your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. And remember, if one side is blocked, if your left nostril is blocked, one side is always more blocked than another. If your left is blocked, you can take your fist or your fingers and jam it under your right armpit, and that will release the left side. If it's the right side that's blocked, you do the alternative. You take your fist and you jam it underneath the left armpit, or you take your fingers and dig them in. You have to dig them in and squeeze firmly. I prefer the fists, it's not such pressure on the joint. So I'll be quiet for a few moments and I'll leave you to do a few rounds of alternate nostril, in left, right, in right, out left.
one more round after the one that you're on. If you want to do longer, pause the video. So remember, any time you're out of sorts and you're too hyper and you want to calm down, you only breathe through the left nostril. Easy way to remember, left lowers. If you can't get up in the morning, you're a bit lethargic or you feel you want some energy to do a particular chore, sit down and breathe for five, 10 minutes through the right nostril, right raises. You mustn't take my word for gospel. Try these things out and see, see what effect it has for you. So we've just done the balance and breath. So we'll see if we can balance. We'll do the balancing cat. So we come into the cat position. Remember the knees are directly under the hips. So make sure you've got the width. You'll need the width. The hands are right under the shoulders. If this is too much for the wrists, you can always take your fingers and move them slightly further forward to change the angle. We're going to raise the right arm and left leg. And we're just going to inhale as we stretch out, stretch through the right, stretch through the left, right arm, left leg, and relax. This is all we're looking for. So if you're wobbling and shaking, you can stop and try and widen your stance with your knees, adjust your hands, get a, get a position that feels comfortable before you start. Inhale as you stretch through. And relax. And if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, as you inhale and stretch and point through the finger and point through the leg, you can raise it up once you've got the stretch. But always stretch first. So you inhale, get the stretch, and that's what you'd lift up. more. And then change sides. Check that you're comfortable before you start, because remember each side is always different. Stretch up with the left arm, the right leg, Inhale as you stretch. Nice and relaxed. And after a few stretches, if you feel comfortable and you want to raise the arm with the stretch and the leg, inhale, stretch, and then you can raise. Very subtle movements, but very beneficial. And release. So we stay in this position. And we're going to take the right foot and take it to the outside of the right hand. <laughs> Again, we've done, we've done all of these before. And you're just looking for a gentle movement through the hips. If you can edge your foot, your right foot, beyond your fingers, if you can, then. So you have three, you, you have three options with the hands. Remember, you can be flat with the fingers, which means it's more strenuous on the back and you get less of a lunge. Or you can come up on your fists, which right away you'll notice a difference for the movement in the back and the lunge. 
fungus stretch through the hamstring. And lastly, you can come up on your fingers, but it's important to keep the thumb directly under the joint so it acts as a post. And then you've got this, which again, isn't so strenuous on the back because you can lift right up and concave the back, but you get more of a lunge. So you have three options. So play about with them and soften and relax into the movement. Remember, concentration leads to tranquility, which may give some insight. So if you're straining, if you're stressed, if you're uncomfortable, you won't get the tranquility and you won't get the insight. You'll just be uncomfortable physically. This is why in yoga, you always start with the physical movements, the postures, the, the most basic, because you're trying to ease tension out of the body so you can sit or remain in posture for a prolonged period to go within, deeper within. So again, you get the idea with that. So come out, a quick athletic flip. Left foot forward. And be careful not to strain. It's very easy to go into the lunge and you'll pull a groin muscle. I've done it myself. And you'll tweak a hamstring. So move just gently to begin with and see if you can edge the foot forward. And then decide if you want the hands flat. Or come up in the fists. And you can, again, you can have the fists vertical or horizontal. Again, because we, we carry injuries, we carry damage to the body. So find a way that works. Or open your fingers. I know I'm repeating myself, but again, you can stop the video, rewind it. And play about at your leisure. But the posture should feel effortless. It should be slow, smooth, deep breath. As you exhale, you want to smile because you're so comfortable in the posture and you're allowing the body to stretch naturally in line with the breath. You're nourishing the body. You're not straining your face. You're not holding your breath. You're allowing. And when you're ready, you come out. And we'll just step up into a standing position. And again, it's a lot of postures today, but I just wanted to show you the capability of this, the spine. If you, if you stretch it one way, then you, you should generally try and stretch it the opposite way and it was a chance to show these postures. So again, we're going to do a very simple twist. Arms straight out, feet parallel, inhale. As we exhale, we're going to turn to the right and allow the left thumb to slide along the arm, keeping the left elbow up. So we've turned right round to the right and have a few breaths in this position. Careful you don't drop the left elbow. I did it myself. You get a nice pull in the um, trapezius muscles on the neck. So don't drop the chin, keep the neck long. Keep looking at that right thumb and allow the body to release naturally. And then when you're ready on an inhalation as you come back, Allow the thumb to slide along the right arm, and then you're going to the left. Keep the neck long, don't drop the chin. Smile on your exhalation. 
Remember, this is meant to be enjoyable. And inhale as you come back. Hmm. And these movements we've been doing, we're going to do the Dwi, I don't know if I've done this one before, the Dwi Kanasana, the two angled pose. So we're going to do a forward bend, but keep our torso parallel to the ground. So just a forward bend like this. No further. That's uh, 90 degrees. But before we do that, we're going to clasp our hands behind our back. So we've already warmed up all the body. Feet parallel. And you see right away what it's done to the shoulders. It's opened them up. You're standing tall. You're proud. Take a few comfort breaths. And as you exhale, I'll go around sideways. You're just, you're not lifting the hands, you're just, as you exhale, you're just gently allowing them to slide down over the buttocks. And it's opening the shoulders, squeezing the shoulder blades. This itself is a good posture. But when you're ready, we're going to go into that 90 degree, degrees forward bend and we're going to raise the arms. So inhale, exhale as we come forward to 90 degrees, relax. Inhale as you push away with the arms, and exhale as you lift. You're looking straight down at the ground. There should be no uh, stress in the neck. Inhale, the legs are straight because you're only at 90 degrees with the back, we can ask now the two ankle posture. So again, you can stay here as long as you wish, if you're comfortable, if there's no strain, if you're enjoying it, if it's beneficial. When you're ready to come up, inhale. Release the arms and ooh, you get this lovely rush of blood into the back of the shoulders, neck, arms. And we'll just finish with a very relaxing uh, Vedic salutation. So that's quite a strong class today. How are we doing for, yeah, we're, we're, my apologies, we've run with us slightly, but hey. Okay, stand tall. Give yourself a big pat in the back. Friedrich salutation. Remember, we're going to open and close the hands, open and close the arms, stretch up, down, open and close arms, open and close hands. Very gently. So we get a comfortable stance. So we, everything is relaxed, remember. The neck, the shoulders, the arms. We're just going to inhale and just Turn the palms open. We're not opening the arms, just the palms. Wait for your natural pause. It should be reasonable because we've done so much breathing that the blood is all oxygenated. We've released stress in the body. Exhale as we close. Inhale as we open the arms. Stretch through. Lean back gently, look up. Wait for your pause. Exhale, namaste. Now I actually feel the sensation and tingling right up to my fingertips, circulation. Inhale as we raise our clasp. Uh, sorry, our namaste. I'll step back a bit so you can see. And this should feel very relaxing and almost effortless after all the hard stuff we've done. And in your own time, as always, exhale lower down. And then we'll open the arms.
Take your clothes. I barely feel the need to move. Inhale, open the hands to finish. Exhale, close. Now, I just feel I have a film of energy over my whole body. For those of you of a British background, I was an advert in Britain. It was a hot, hot drink, ready break. It was ready break for kids. And the advert put the kids off to school after having had some ready break with hot milk. And there was a film of warmness around their body to protect them from the cold. So I'll finish one more round in your own time. I won't talk through this one so you can immerse yourself in the practice. So you can remain standing or you can sit down, you can lie down. And I'll just read the finishing quote and reflect on your today's practice. So we started with the fact that you aren't where you want to be should be enough motivation. But then you have to put some work in to create some spaces between the thoughts Please attention out of the body, concentrate on what you're doing, which leads to tranquility. And then you might get some spaces between your thoughts and insight. So the finishing quote, and all of this goes as part of what we've just done. The best six doctors, the best six doctors, water, air, rest, Diet, exercise, and sunshine. They didn't come in this order. I moved them about because I wanted to make a simple word that you will easily remember. The best six doctors, it actually spells W-A-R-D-E-S. Now, I know wards, as in a hospital ward, doesn't have E-S, but wards. These, if you follow these six doctors, you'll stay out of any wards. You follow water air, rest, diet, exercise, and sunshine. It's a wonderful place to start. As always, thank you very much, and uh, namaste with much love.